Hello, my name is Gobiga Amukmar, and I am part of the Youth Advisory Group of West, the Western Library. Today, I'll be interviewing Gail Christie as a part of the Western Library Centenary Project. After Weston became part of the city of York, Gail was counselor of York from 1974 to 1978 and mayor between 1978 and 1982. She also served as a trustee for the Board of Education. Welcome, uh, Gail Christie, and thank you for taking um, your time and speaking to us today. I couldn't think of, of a way to spend my time better. I've always had the library at my heart. As a kid, I used to work there, so it's always been my favorite. So we have a few questions to ask you to learn about your experience here. So the first question, how do you remember the Weston Library or even the community in your youth? Oh, it was, it was a beautiful community. The main street was one that you wanted to come and shop on. We had a beautiful grocery store. We had men's stores, flower shops, and it was where everyone wants, wanted to be. In fact, my sister worked in the grocery store on, on the main street when I was a kid, when she was in high school. So that would be in the 50s, 1950. And uh, one of my favorite things was going to the sock hops at uh, Western Collegiate or St. Philip's Church. Just around. It's a beautiful spot. Did you do any social activities? Like, I know that I'm going to semi-formal in March. It's like a dance. Did you do anything mm -hmm. like that in your youth? Oh, of course. But usually the semi-formals were at the school you attended. And I attended Runnymede Collegiate and worked at the Jane Street Library. So I would come up for the saw cops. And unfortunately, none of those gorgeous men from Western Collegiate invited me to their prom. <laughs> their loss. <laughs> so another question would be, the next part of the library was added when you were in office as mayor. Could you tell us about what motivated this addition to the library? Because I've always loved historical buildings in this library just happened to be one of the beautiful architectural pieces of the old town of Weston and it reflected the community because if you go through Weston and see some of those magnificent historic homes we we have a spot here that's unlike many in, in the city it's, it's one unique community so for me I it was important to retain that character of the old town of Weston. Were there any oppositions for the new addition? Yes. Uh, in council, there were a number of suggestions because there were some people on the city council who believed that we should be, we would never be able to negotiate with the school that's adjacent to us, and that we should take this and move it over to the town hall. They looked at what kind of weight the stacks would be in the city hall, the old city hall in Weston. They looked at all sorts of alternatives. But for me, there was nothing that I felt should stand in our way of picking up the extra land from the Board of Education and continuing this magnificent piece of architecture for the people in Weston. That's pretty amazing. So we have some photographs from the celebrations that took place at the opening of the new edition. Could you describe the ceremony to us? Like, what happened during the ceremony? Oh, the ceremony is for an opening of a, a library or digging, you know, the first shovelful for construction is always quite a, an event for the community because they all come to it. The chair of the library board was there, Frank Lambert, who is a magnificent advocate for libraries and Bovis Dare, who really wanted to, in fact, both of those and the library board at the time, really wanted to continue this building. They didn't want to move. They wanted to make sure that we retain this little piece of history. Um, so usually it's greetings from the chair. They'll talk about the library, and Bovis Dare did. He talked about the library and the the projects that were coming up and how we were going to make this one of the best libraries in the city of York. 
Um, and then there would be a celebration. Lots of the public was here. You know, they came in because it's their library. So we had cake and cookies and coffee and celebrated the fact that we had a new piece of history being built. That's mind-blowing. Like, you and I can't imagine that I could have never been to one before. Oh, we'll have to make sure we get you to a few. And I, I have to tell you what's, you said it's mind-blowing. What's mind-blowing to me is that we have a group of young people who've taken on this project, which is so important to the people in, in Weston, and we've got our librarian who is 100% behind it, and all of you are working so hard to preserve a little bit of our history. It's so important. It's Thank just, you. <laughs> it's just amazing listening to these stories and everything that you guys tell us. And what I want to find, what I really want to know was, was there anything, not only just with the Western Library, but the Western community, that left a mark in your life that you could remember that it was just a particular event that you could still remember like it was yesterday? I was probably elected for just a very short time. And I woke up one morning at about 8 o'clock, 7.30 to a phone call from, it must have been about 8 or 8, 8.30, from John Dean, who was head of ambulance, and who told me that we'd had an incredible, horrific accident of a group of our students from Western Collegiate who'd gone on a ski trip. I immediately, of course, went to the school. It was absolute chaos there. So I set about, and I had a friend with me who was a sergeant in police, and I set up a spot where phone calls could come in directly from the ambulance and from the hospital. The parents were then, I moved them off into the, the, uh, the main hall and got coffee and donuts, got the principal and teachers settled in their offices. But what what really I have never been able to forget, besides the facts that have hurt so many people, was that the parents of the children who were terribly injured or died were the ones who came to me most persistently asking for their children. It was almost as though they were linked with their child. And that was, that was a, a very... Uh, heartbreaking? It not only was it heartbreaking, but it was all, it showed that link between parent and child. You know, it was almost as though they were together. It was I really know. horrible. I, I, and the effect on a lot of the children, a lot of the young people who would now be about 50, was, was dramatic. I knew if anything happened to me, it would devastate both my parents. Oh. Awful. Well, I had my oldest child was hit by a car on the way to school and died. So that's I'm when sorry. she was eight years old. So I know how it feels, and I, I guess I felt really connected to those parents because of the way things played out. But the school has gone on, and one of the things we always have to remember is we have to live for the living and understand those who had a tragic accident, are there looking out for us and helping guide us on our way. That's what I believe. I believe that too. So, in your opinion, how was Weston affected when it was incorporated with the city of York? I believe it lost a lot. The ability to walk in and know their counselor. They had more counselors. So it was sort of the same effect of this amalgamation of Toronto. When York and Weston were together, everybody knew who was making the decisions and who were the board of directors who were responsible to them. I know the same thing happened to, to Weston because they had people like the Trimbies, all sorts of people who, who really cared and their hearts were were right there for, for the town of Weston and, 
and their bosses, who were the people who lived on the street. And one of the things, when I ran as mayor, one thing that really struck me was John Downing, who was a columnist for the Toronto Sun, who came to me and he said, you know, once Weston amalgamated with the borough of York, we lost our not only our identity, but we lost the people who really cared about us. Because if you look in front of my aunt's house, it's a big historic house on Western Road. They allowed a little strip plaza to be built there, blocking it from the street. He was so infuriated. And that's what happens when you start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You lose your identity. You lose the ability to walk in and say, I need your help. You know, here's what's happened. I have a stream under my house. It's erupted. It's flooding my basement. I can't pump the water out fast enough. Please, somebody help me. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's really tragic. I think bigger is not better. You should stick with the smaller. I think you have to stick with manageable size communities. I, I believe it's important for people to recognize their representative on the street. I believe it's important for them to understand that those are the people who are your bosses and make sure you weigh your decisions so carefully that you maintain the balance between the community, you know, the rich, the poor, and the middle, so that there's a good balance for your schools, for your recreation programs, for your, your markets, you know, your sales, just everything. And without that, that balance, you lose so much. You really do. So my final question for you today is, what do you foresee for the future of Weston? Is there anything that can be done to return it to its former glory? I think it will at some point. I don't know what the timing is because I, one of the areas that I might compare it a little bit to is the junction. The junction Main Street went way down on Dundas. The homes behind were not bad. But it's, I, I think we need the market and we need to make sure that the balance of the community is right. I have the biggest heart in the world, but if you are, if you have only social, socially assisted housing on your main street, or there's too much of it, the balance goes off. And then the stores who, who have to sell whatever their product is, don't, it'll be a dollarama. It won't be something that looks a little prettier or a little smarter. I think eventually, maybe 20 years from now, Main Street may catch up with the real town of Weston, which is incorporating all the homes right behind Weston Road. And the Blue 22 hasn't helped necessarily either. Uh, in fact, I, I applaud the work that Mike Sullivan, who's a member of parliament, has done, and Laura Albanese, because that's, although it may be good for the big area, the total city, it's not helping us here. It's, it's splitting the community in half. But again, congratulations to you for all your hard work. And you know what? You may be running for mayor. And if you are, please, will you sign my autograph when, when you get there? I think I'm just going to stick with the library. <laughs> and I started out there, remember, I worked for the library for five years. I really loved it. I think I, like you, read almost all the books. And I saw that stack you took out. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Gail Christie, for coming in and giving us the information that we needed for our project. And this is just a small token of our appreciation. Oh, thank you. A new library card. <laughs> Can I open it here? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Thank you very much.